Hi everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. For years, I have marveled at Paul McCartney's versatility. His ability to be a kind of voice chameleon became apparent to me when I realized that sometimes I had trouble knowing if it was Paul or not on Beatles recordings. Paul can sound all different kinds of ways. He not only possesses the ability to change his voice to suit the style, but he also has the courage to do it, I think more so than any other artist. Here he is talking about how he's very aware of this ability to recognize his influences from other artists and even mimic them. Now, we were a mixture <laughs> of all the people we'd loved, but we weren't any individual one of them. So we were like Everly Brothers when John and I sang harmony. We were like Buddy Holly when we did those kind of songs. We were like Elvis when we did this. So uh, it just made up to a new sound. So I want to try to paint you a picture today of the many voices of Sir Paul McCartney, or the man of a thousand voices. The man of a thousand voices. Oh, classic Paul. We all know classic Paul, the honest, straightforward, baritone, but mostly tenor Paul, who tells us a story. You can't help but imagine the blackbird in whatever way you see it, waiting to arise. Or the woman in the chapel picking up rice or the long and winding road that will always lead you back to the one that you love. We hear classic Paul most often, I would say, and his voice speaks to countless people across the globe, across all cultures and generations. Some of my favorite classic Paul songs are Let It Be, when I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. Yesterday. Yesterday. All my troubles seem so far away. Blackbird. Blackbird, fly into the line of a dark black night. And my love. I know my heart can stay with my love. In the early days, the Beatles, very much influenced by the early rock pioneers of the day, like Elvis Presley and Chuck Berry, Buddy Holly, Little Richard, tried to copy this bluesy kind of vocal style, sometimes in the covers they did of these songs and also in their own compositions. Both Paul and John were very capable of producing a really bluesy, soulful sound, and they did it throughout their careers. Early examples of Paul in this role are Long Tall Sally, Kansas City slash Hey 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 Hey, I can't really imagine the Beatles having done Oh Darling with anybody else's voice but Paul's. When you told me you didn't need me anymore Well you know I nearly fell down and died Man, he brought so much soul to that vocal. Later examples that I really like are Call Me Back Again from the Venus and Mars Wings album. But I never, no, no, never me. And of course, maybe I'm amazed. Both Paul and John listened to a lot of old jazz music from the 30s and 40s when they were growing up. Paul's dad was a big band guy and a great piano player. They both carried a great affection for this music and it shows up all the way through their careers. Paul was very good at singing in this style. In sweet, fragrant meadows of dawn and you. Other crooning examples that I love are She's Leaving Home, 
Silently closing her bedroom door Leaving the note that she hoped would say more When I'm 64 If I'd been out till quarter to three Would you lock the door? Honey pie Honey pie You are making me crazy Your mother should know Your mother should know Let's all get up and dance to a song that was a hit before your mother was born. Also, you gave me the answer from the Venus in Mars Wings album. You gave me the answer of eternity. I love you and you seem like me. And later from Paul's solo career, Calico Skies, one of my favorites. It was written that I would love you. From the minute I opened my eyes Rockin' Paul I think it's just astounding that in 1967 you can have Paul crooning away and then on the same exact album get something as dirty and gritty as, say, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Not to mention the fact that I will Wait a lonely lifetime precedes Why Don't We Do It In The Road. Why don't we do it in the road? Paul can really rock. Also check out this video of I'm Down from the Beatles live in Germany. When you know I'm down When you know I'm down Helter Skelter is so rockin' that some people consider it the first taste of metal that we see in rock history. A more gravelly, raspy, intense Paul can be heard on Monkberry Moon Delight. And how can we forget the reckless abandon at the end of Hey Jude. Silly Paul. Silly, silly, silly. I'm extremely silly. Some of my favorite music from Paul McCartney is just Paul messing around being silly. He's a great reminder not to take yourself too seriously and to just always have fun messing around with music. Do you want us to do it again, George? Okay. You Know My Name, Look Up My Number, written by John. It was on the B-side of the Let It Be single. It has some of the silliest Paul moments I can think of. You know, you know my name. You, you know, you know my name. Maybe even more silly is the recording they did of Step Inside Love slash Los Paranoias for the Scylla Black show in 1968. Come on, you can do it, baby. Come on and join Los Paranoias. Los Paranoias. Come on and join us. He knew how to play with his vocal timbre and kept doing it. It still keeps doing it to this day. Here he is on Uncle Albert, Admiral Halsey, making strange noises with his tongue. Here's a very British Paul narrating for us. But we haven't done then very British Paul full on sings for us about his tea. I had another look and I had a cup of tea and a butter pie. And a little bit of silly narration from Paul on Magneto and Titanium Man. So we went out. Which leads us to Experimental Paul. Experimental, Experimental Paul. Paul. Get Back has what I call like a throaty sound kind of made more in the back of his mouth. And I think this kind of experimentation shows up all through the Beatles catalog. Get back. Get back. Get back to where you once 
He's always messing around, placing his voice in different places to try to get those different sounds that complement whatever style he's singing in. You never give me your money. It's almost as if Paul has three different voices or three different characters for each distinct section of the song. The McCartney 2 album has what almost sound like several hyperpop tracks with Paul just really experimenting with his voice and a tape machine. In the first track, Coming Up, Paul experiments with placing his sound very far forward in his mouth in a small space. It creates a really cool effect. Bogeyman, he sings in two different voices at the same time, one panned left and one panned right. He uses a much more nasal tone in Temporary Secretary. And here's a fun example from what I call Chain Smoker Paul from Bip Bop on the Wildlife album 1971. Country Paul. The Rocky Raccoon intro is the best example I can think of from all of the Beatles recordings where Paul really taps into his inner cowboy. Somewhere in the black mining hills of Dakota, there lived a young boy named Rocky Raccoon. He's a good actor. It's fun to listen to the outtakes of this one to hear him really get into character. After the Beatles broke up, Paul and Linda moved to Scotland to try their hand at country living. And I don't know if it was that or just, you know, his own flight of fancy, but I think that country Paul comes out in quite a few of his Wings recordings. Heart of the Country has got a folksy Paul. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna go, gonna tell everyone I know, ooh, ooh, living in a home in the heart of the country. 1985 from the Band on the Run album is a more twangy Paul. I know I'll never let my 1985 will ever do. Sally G sounds very country too from Venus and Mars. Lies the friendly state of Tennessee. And Three Legs is a really fun one as well. It's worth noting that Paul uses two different voices in this song again. When I walk, when I walk, oh, my horse upon the Fall said a Paul. Paul most often sang in his tenor range, although he had a what I'd call a baritone range too. He rarely used it. I think he does more often now. But he has a huge range and a heck of a high register, which I'd like to highlight now in this section. He sounds like an angel or a choir boy in the chorus of She's Leaving Home. I think it's so beautiful. Listen for the high parts. We gave her most of our lives. She's leaving. Sacrificed most of our lives. Oh, we get I think it's such a tender moment at the end of Here, There, and Everywhere when Paul ends by going up the octave. Paul actually tried to sing like another singer, specifically on Here, There, and Everywhere. When I sang it in the studio, I remember thinking, I'll sing it like Marianne Faithful. It's something no one would ever know. You get these little things in your mind, you think, I'll sing it like James Brown. But of course, it's always you that sings it. He gets a really fun effect out of his voice on Dark Room, also from McCartney 2. And I love this bit from the end of Uncle Albert, Admiral Halsey. And on So Bad, from his Pipes in Peace solo album, Paul gets an even cooler sound out of his upper register that's breathy and airy and really honest in a way. So 
I should mention that in addition to being able to experiment with the sound and the color of his voice, Paul and the Beatles were always experimenting with microphones, different microphones, different miking techniques. And I think that they were really lucky that their A&R guys didn't make them find a sound and stick to it all the time. They had a lot of free reign to really explore. I think that's one of the things that makes the Beatles music timeless. You don't get tired of it. As well as Paul's solo recordings, and it continues to be this way today. The man of a thousand voices is still experimenting, and I'm so glad. Thank you, everybody, for watching Amy Nolte Music. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.